right, and this was a requested problem in the comments. If you have a request, leave it in the comments. I can't do every problem. I can do a lot, like 90% plus of all the AMC 10 and 12, and usually about the first 10 of the AIME, sometimes beyond that, but it just depends. Uh, 2014 AMC 10B problem 23, it was also the 12B problem 19. A sphere is inscribed in a truncated right circular cone as shown. They have a much better picture because they have, you know, computer graphing imagery. I've drawn kind of what it looks like. Um, the volume of the truncated cone, which by the way is called a frustum, is twice that of the sphere. Before we continue, we're probably going to need to know the volume of a frustum. If you've memorized it, good on you, but if you haven't, you're going to have to derive it. I think it's worth memorizing it. Maybe. We'll talk about it in a second. First, let's derive it and see how long it takes. So if you have uh, basically a truncated cone, it's a cone in which part of it has been cut off. And I'm going to call the top base little r and the big base big R and the height of the truncated cone H and we will call this part up here X. Okay, then what is the truncated area going to be? It's basically the whole cone minus the top cone, right? That makes sense. So that's one third pi. The volume of a cone is one third pi R squared H, uh, but we have a big R. So we're gonna put the, the one third pi is in both, right? So we'll put one third pi big R squared uh, H plus X because the height of the big cone is this X plus the height of the frustum. Okay, and then minus uh, one, the same formula, one third pi little R squared times its height. So it's R squared X. Okay, well that's great so far, but that's a lot of different variables running around. What can we do to make this a little bit easier? Don't forget that with cones, if you cut off part of it, you get similar triangles. And as such, the height to the base ratios are the same. That is that X over R, the height to base of the upper cone, is X plus H over big R here. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. It just should come naturally. RX plus RH. I think I want this X to go away. Um, because we don't really want that in our formula anyway. It's not part of the frustum. So let's solve for it. Uh, we will subtract little big Rx minus little Rx equals uh, Rh. Um, by the way, usually use the big R and lowercase r for the bigger radius and smaller radius. It's just logical. So pull out the X and you will have this. Go ahead and divide by that and this is what x is equal to. It's a little sloppy, it's not really all equals like that, but that's in the box is what the x is equal to. So we kind of don't want to plug that in here and here. It looks like it's going to get a little hairy, so maybe we can get an idea. Look at this denominator, big R minus little r. If I've got big R squared x and little r squared x with a minus sign, we can factor out the x and do difference of squares. Let's do that. So we get one third pi times it's going to be r squared h plus x times r squared minus little r squared, just like that. Now if I replace the x, which is this expression, the, this is r plus r, r minus r, right? So it's going to give one third pi r squared h plus this cancels into that. I'm trying to save a little bit of time. So that's going to leave us with the numerator RH times R plus H, or R plus R rather, little r. Okay, so this will be little r because the r minus r cancels the r minus r here, right? Hopefully you're following. There's an H here and an H here. We'll factor it out to get the final formula for a frustum. Uh, which is, oh, I forgot the H. Okay, so put the H here, and we get R squared plus, this H is gone, R times big R, and R times little r. Okay, so there we've done it. This is the volume 
of a frustum. Okay. Now, the question is, should you memorize it? Uh, looking at the video's time, uh, I don't know where we're at. We're at about uh, five minutes now. So uh, it probably took me two minutes to derive that. Minute and a half maybe to two minutes if you're fast, maybe less than two minutes. So is it worth it? I think of Frustum has appeared on the AMC 10 or 12 or maybe the AIME maybe three times in 20 years. Not a lot. Uh, I don't even know if it's appeared more than this once. I'm just guessing it, it's not that common if it does come up. So, uh, but it's not that hard to memorize, right? If we look at the volume of a cone, one third pi r squared h, you can just memorize this and the h are part of the frustum and even the r squared could help trigger a memory. It's basically big R squared, little r squared and big R, there's two r's in each of the expressions. Maybe you can add that to your small notebooks just in case it happens to come up during your middle school and high school mathematical career. Okay, so now we have that. Let's move on to the next part. Uh, keep reading. So we've got the volume of the truncated cone is twice that of the sphere. What is the ratio of the radius of the bottom base of the truncated cone to the radius of the top base of the truncated cone? So we're looking basically for big R to little r from over there, but maybe we can make our lives a little easier. Number one, people aren't very good at drawing in 3D shapes. So it's better to try and think in a cross section. Um, so if I go to a cross section of what it would look like in the cone, it's basically going to be a trapezoid with a circle inscribed inside that trapezoid, uh, which is the great circle of the sphere. And pay no attention to the um, you know, lack of accuracy here. Um, it'll still work just fine. So this is big R, this is little r up here. And if we drop the height of the cone, which over there we call H, then we could call this, let's call it, we use an X already, let's call it Y and Y for the radius of the sphere. Um, what can we do next? Well, maybe we could do something because this is a ratio, we can just let little r equal one. It doesn't really affect anything. Say r was 2.2 centimeters, no big deal. Then we set 2.2 centimeters equal to one unit. So generally speaking, when you have ratios, you can set something equal to one. So if we set the little r equal to one, the answer we're looking for now is just what is the big radius? Because that's the answer. Um, it wants the radius of the bottom base to the top base. So yeah, that's what we want. Then uh, what can we do? If I change this to a one, then this will be a one here. Uh, how does that work? If you have a circle and there's a point outside of it, these two tangents will always be equal in length, okay? So then this is a point outside this great circle. Its distance to this tangent and this tangent must be equal. Likewise, this must be R also. Further, from trapezoids, you should remember a great idea is to drop the height over at the edge of the top uh, base because you can create a right triangle. And this will be 2Y. And what will this be right here? If the whole thing is r and this distance is one, this will be r minus one. And now we can make a Pythagorean statement. Two uh, y quantity squared plus r minus one squared equals r plus one squared. Okay, uh, we don't even know how we're gonna use this right now, but let's go ahead and do it because it feels right. It feels like something you can find, so you probably should. Um, you're going to get 4y squared plus big R squared minus 2R plus 1 equals R squared plus 2R plus 1. The R squareds and 1s all cancel because they're the same on both sides. 4y squared after moving the 2R over is 4R. Cancel the 4s. Y then is equal to the square root of R. Okay, so now what can we do? Let's move this out of here. Uh, we need to go to the, what it told us. It told us that the volume of the truncated cone, which is this, we're going to write it as one third pi. Instead of putting h, note that h was the height of the truncated cone. We're going to take the 2y that we put here, but even that we're going to swap out for root r. So it's 2 capital root r times r squared. Um, and now the little r is 1. So we can just make this plus r plus one. There it is. That's the volume of the 
truncated cone is twice that of the sphere. So again, a sphere's volume, we'll just write it up here, is 4 thirds pi r cubed, but r r is not that r, it's actually this y right here, the radius of the sphere. So it's going to be 4 thirds pi, and then the r again is y, so it's y cubed, but we don't want uh, y, we want root r. So if I cube this, it's going to be this cubed, which is r root r. Okay, uh, and we said times 2, twice that of the sphere. So we'll just change this 4 to an 8, because 2 times 4 thirds is 8 thirds. Now you want to do cleanup. Don't just start distributing. Get rid of stuff to make life less complicated. There's a root r here and a root r here. Cancel, cancel. Pi cancels. Multiply by 3, cancel. Divide by 2, you get 4. So finally, you're going to get 4R equals capital R squared plus R plus 1, because as you notice, we made everything over here cancel, making our life easier. Subtract 4R to get minus 3R plus 1 equals 0. We're going quadratic formula. Negative B is positive 3 plus or minus the square root of B squared, B being the coefficient, 9 minus 4. A and C are both 1. So it is just 9 minus 4 over 2a, which is the coefficient here, which is 1. So you get this expression. Now, I want to point something out real quick. You might be like, well, which one is it? Is it the 3 plus or the 3 minus? Well, there's only one up here, so you don't have to figure it out during the test. But your mathematical curiosity should be piqued about which one, and why it's not the other one. Why could it be the other one in some cases? It's just one of the possibilities. Actually, it's not. This is the only possibility. The answer is E. I'm going to let you tell me why can big R not equal 3 minus root 5 over 2? Go ahead and leave what you think the reason is in the comments. I'm sure many of you already have thought about it and know. Uh, and I will see you in the next problem. Have a great night.